Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the Volvo S90 facelift. Okay, this is for the hazard uh, to actually spot your car and drinks really aggressively. And these buttons unlock the car, lock the car, actually lock the car, unlock the car, and to open the boot of the vehicle. Now this is the safety key which kind of restricts the top speed of an already restricted car which has a top speed restricted to 180 kilometers per hour. The keys are actually a work of art. They look really very nice. Let's put it here inside. Now straight away I'm going to be opening the engine bay of this vehicle which means there's a lever here which needs to be pushed and there it is the engine which is a petrol unit there is insulation right there very neatly packaged engine looks really very nice says Volvo right there and there you can see the engine functioning at the moment okay let's just shut this which means I have to really stretch because it goes up I mean it goes up so much now look at it almost vertical you know 90 degree opening hood take that Tata Ultras <laughs> okay let's just shut it oh my god it says Volvo right there can you see that and here it shuts oh my god that was quite a bang <laughs> anyways you can't really differentiate this car from the pre facelifted model because the changes are really very minor okay the grill is slightly flatter now the logo is slightly different now there's a front parking camera here there's chrome here on the grill of course the bumper is slightly different the fog lights are kind of new that's about the change on the front of this vehicle like really minor you can't really make it out okay the lights are really beautiful all led units it says full LED active high beam there you can see that okay and when you actually move from high beam to low beam now or vice versa also the lights inside they move that's really very nice says Volvo right here and they've used chrome in the right places of course Thor's hammer LED light of course the DRL and here is the fog light meanwhile this is for the parking sensors and there's a parking sensor here also this is the towing hook but the headlight washers have disappeared completely now another thing is that these are cornering lights so depending where you turn the steering the fog light also changes direction there are the parking sensors and this is the indicator which actually um, i mean is in the position of where the drl is so the drl shuts and the indicator turns on when you use the indicator of course now this is a big car it competes with the mercedes e-class the audi a6 as well as the jaguar xf that's the reason it's quite long almost five meters in length the wheelbase is almost three meters and it's beautiful i mean the design of this car is really fantastic the wheels on this car happen to be 18 inches the size of the tires happen to be 245 45 18s i like the alloy wheel design on this car but you see the nuts they are also finished in black sort of treatment it looks quite nice indeed i don't know why volvos look so good in white i mean it looks absolutely fantastic volvo knows that that's why all the press cars are almost always white okay you can see the design elements are really nice you get this sort of a chrome treatment on the window there is a camera here because obviously it gets a 360 degree camera and at night when you unlock the car there's a light which comes out right from there okay now you get chrome here and request sensors are there on all the doors so you can just go and open the doors as it is now there is a shark fin antenna i think slightly sloping roof line as well coming to the rear okay it's a long walk because this is a long car Again, there are revisions, firstly to the bumper and you see parking sensors, there are so many of them, there are like six parking sensors at the rear, says S90 and it gets dynamic swipe indicators which you can see look really nice. The lights have been revised slightly, S90, Volvo written right there boldly, B5 is the trim level. This is actually, you guessed it right, the rear fog light of the vehicle and this happens to be for the reversing light of course. It looks really nice from the rear as well. And here you get a towing hook. Now, Faisal Khan's fingers of truth cannot find the real exhaust because it is actually hidden underneath. So this is where the real exhaust of this car is and it is there on both the sides. Yeah, it has exhaust on both the sides. The camera is also positioned quite low. Let's open the boot of the vehicle, which means pressing a button here and there it opens. Is it a power tailgate? Yes, it is. Okay, the boot is decent size. Someone has put this plastic, which means that we will have the pleasure of doing this. Ah, that's so soothing. There's a 12 volt charging socket right there and a first aid kit, this storage space here as well. There's a hook right there, spare wheel, where is it? Well, this is the spare wheel, which is of course not an alloy. It's actually a smaller size wheel. It is a 125, 70, 19. Yeah, restricted to 80 kilometers per hour. Toolkit is also placed here. Seats obviously fold flat. I mean, you can increase the boot carrying capacity by reclining the seats. This is a warning triangle. Press this button and there, okay. Press this button and there, the boot shuts. Very nice very smooth in terms of design 10 on 10 for volvo beautiful looking car really very beautiful let's open the rear door and it does open wide enough and it's easy to get in but the seats are definitely on the lower side okay storage space is decent love the leather treatment you get this white stitching almost everywhere chrome as well and they have actually played with colors beautifully well you can see so many colors here itself 
Now this is obviously manually retractable and I need to put in some effort to open it. There you see manually retractable sunshades, which is a good touch because it was not there earlier, but you know, to put it back, it's not the easiest. Yeah, there it slots into place. So doors are really nice because passengers at the rear can also lock or unlock the doors if they so wish. Love the treatment of the speakers. What a fantastic car. Here you can see seat like I told you is on the lower side but again seats are extremely comfortable like amazing material quality here which is fantastic to say the least isofix child seat mounts and here you get a center armrest the center headrest is also adjustable because Volvo knows every person has a head as such and you get cup holders here too you can actually remove this to access the boot or to carry longer items I doubt anybody would do that in India though okay now, yeah, seatbelt position is nice. It says airbag right there. And there's a quarter glass here as well. I'm trying to figure out how do you recline the seat? Does it recline or not? It should recline actually. But yeah, I'm a little poor with that. So because I sit so low down, under thigh support is not the best. Legroom and knee room is fantastic though. And this is not scooped out, but there is a magazine holder here. You can see headroom is just about adequate for someone as tall as me. There's a hook and a handle. And there's a handle on every door, including the one at the driver's side. And here, let's just shut this. This should have opened. That would have been really nice. But hey, seats are really comfortable. And there is... Okay, they've removed the 12-volt charging socket and they put two USB charging sockets here. USB-C, that is, that is very good. AC vents are here. And this is also a touch panel. So you can actually operate the air conditioning right from there. But it says it's locked at the moment. The air conditioning is actually off. That's the reason this is not functioning. So we're going to just turn on the air conditioning, which means that I have to stretch up. And then I'm going to turn it on one there. Yeah, there the air conditioning turns on. It gets a four zone climate control air conditioning system. You're just going to shut it for a moment. So that's also a very nice touch. And AC vents are here on the B pillar as well. Seat belts get the height adjust function. There is a hook right there. Again, it says airbag. So many airbags in this car. Let's turn off the air conditioning. The dashboard design looks very similar to what it was before. Looks really very nice. The quality levels inside are fantastic. Love the stitching on this car. The seat comfort. The headrest might be a little chintum into, but they are very comfortable indeed. And there's a touch sensitive light on the center, of course. But unfortunately, it doesn't get a massive panoramic roof. It just gets a single sunroof as such. And that's about it. Bowers and Wilkins written right there. It has a fantastic audio system. Okay, it's a 19 speaker unit and it has like 1400 watt output as well. That's absolutely phenomenal. No soft door close though. So with that kind of audio system, audio quality is absolutely phenomenal. That's the reason in the end of the video, we're going to be doing a proper audio test. And there is the blind spot system from Volvo, which again looks and feels fantastic because it works fantastically well. The safety systems on this car are absolutely terrific. Okay, it says Volvo right here and this also glows at night. Okay, now door pockets are big enough. These are the controls for the outside rear view mirror adjustment. These are the controls for the power windows and this is to lock and unlock the vehicle. This is for the memory seat function, of course. Chrome here, wood treatment there. Beautiful and the white stitching. Is it white? I, I don't know. I kind of feel a little colorblind right now, but this is not white. This is sort of cream, whatever, to match the color of the seats. These are the controls for adjustment of the seats, but the seats get even more functions in the touchscreen. Now, under thigh support is not an issue because you can increase under thigh support. For that function to be activated, I have to go into that screen, which is kind of cumbersome. This is to open the boot of the vehicle. I think this is to increase or decrease the intensity. Or oh, that might be the headlight level, or who knows, who cares. There's a small storage space here, like really chintu mintu. Meanwhile, proper dead padded right there, but hard plastics are there on the lower half. Otherwise, the cabin quality is absolutely fantastic. The seats are really very nice and comfortable. I think these are one of the best seats. And because they're kind of slim, it actually increases the legroom at the rear. And there are these two holes. I don't know for what reason Volvo has given them. Now, the problem is this car gets only, I think, one color for the ambient lighting, which is 63 colors, two less, because Mercedes cars come with 64 colors for the ambient light system. Let's do one thing. Let's open the sunroof, which means you just press this button like this, sort of a touch treatment. Okay, here I have pressed it and oh my God, it's taking its own sweet time to open. There it opens. So sort of touch operated. That's about it. Are you serious? What is happening? Okay, this is not the most intuitive one to use. I want to open it, dude. What are you doing? Let's keep this button pressed and hope it opens any further. Yeah, that's about it. It's very chintu minto. It's not much. Yeah, come on, Volvo. You can do better. Okay, it will not shut unless and until I shut this. So here, we're going to press this button. Come on. Yeah, there it shuts. It needs a bigger sunroof for sure. I mean, come on. Companies are offering panoramic. And 
I want to shut the, what is this confusion happening? Any which ways, dashboard design is really very nice. It's very different from what we've seen in other cars for sure. Nice stitching here. Dashboard is beautifully done. Okay, this is hard plastic, but this is for the wood treatment, but soft here and then a lot of hard and then there's chrome as well. Very tastefully done dashboard. The steering wheel gets adjust for both reach and rig, but it is a manual adjust. Oh no! And because it's got a lot of safety systems, Volvo is written entirely safe here. It's written on the other side as well. So passengers are reassured of their safety. Auto dimming mirror, these are the controls for the lights. Just press them and they activate. And then it has got connected car tech as well because connected car features are there in this car. Here you get a mirror along with the light. Same is the case here as well on the other side because obviously the person sitting there is going to do some makeup. This is, I think, for the speakers or for the mic, and I don't know and I don't care. Steering wheel feels really nice to hold. Beautiful Volvo logo right there. Massive center console. Below here, you've got storage space along with a USB-C and a regular USB. Yeah, I guess that's a regular USB. I really cannot see it. It's kind of difficult to see, but it seems like a, yeah, there is a charging port there. Okay, this is not a regular USB, maybe, I don't know, micro USB charging port. That's again nice and this is decent size as well. Nice wood treatment here. Below this, you obviously get a Jeep key along with twin cup holders. This is a wireless charging pad and there's a 12 volt charging socket here as well. Now, this is the engine start stop button, electric parking brake. This is the auto hold function and this is a beautiful way to turn on and off the car. This is to get into parking, like back into parking and a beautiful Orifors Sweden glass gear lever which is fantastic which even lights up at night it's so beautiful it's a work of art ambient light has i think off medium and high the intensity sort of a yellow light which comes from here and also at the rear and even from the doors which looks okay okay nothing as fancy as, as what i've expected this is to go behind a track this is to go forward a track and this is to you know pause or play any track for the audio system of course this is obviously for the defogger these both buttons and this is for the hazard light so not many buttons as such. Now this is a 9 inch screen and I'm really very disappointed with it. Firstly, it's a fingerprint magnet of course and there's piano black around which again is a fingerprint magnet. The problem with this screen, okay, it's easy to get into the home function by pressing this button. Volvo has actually ditched its fantastic sensor system to opt for this Google based system which is better because Android based it's very confusing to get to any menu you have to get into some menus as well so firstly this is for the air conditioning control here you can turn on the air conditioning and obviously it's got four zone climate control and it also has an air quality system air cleanser or something of that sort it's telling me what is the air quality right now which is again a nice thing it says you are in a clean zone which is very reassuring at the moment now the problem is that you can't find a lot of things and a lot of things are very confusing so here is car status and it tells me what is the tire pressure okay the problem is that in order to get into functions you have to really dig deep and there are maps of course again has to be google maps <laughs> which is actually easy to navigate it's very nice as well then there are voice commands i can just say hey google i love you that's so amazing to hear hey do you want to celebrate you can say yes or no yes awesome how do you want to celebrate with a compliment or a joke just say joke or compliment joke here's a joke in celebration of you what does thor call his underpants thunderwear l o l okay <laughs> so basically because it has google assistant and all that it just makes it much more easier to browse through this and get voice commands and stuff which work flawlessly well because google has been working on it it says lte right there you can see that network because obviously it i think uses a geo sim has connected card tech as well so you can just browse through this but it's a little complex like i told you now this is for the seat ventilation as well as the seat heating and when i press a button down there then okay I can get into massage. I just say stop massage for the moment. It has got massage function with, I think, five programs probably for shoulder. Okay, once I need to start massage and then only I can change this lower back, combined, tread, wave, all these functions are there for the massage. And there are three intensities and three speeds for the same. So it's got ventilated seats, it's got heated seats, it's got massage functions as well. But this nine inch screen is kind of feeling dated now because this is the one which debuted in 2015 with the Volvo XC90. And now it's kind of looking small because obviously other people are offering much bigger screens. Now let's get into reverse now this is the reverse parking camera of this vehicle which you can see it is a 360 degree camera it gets adaptive guidelines as well and when you get into reverse that thing obviously comes down to now the good thing is that because it's got multiple views for the cameras i can change it so this is the rear camera this is the front camera and these are the side cameras so this is one side and this is the other side now this is actually a very nice system as well and then obviously you have for the parking sensors you can go into parking sensors 
Okay, it's something known as your auto brake. What it does is automatically applies brakes when you're reversing. If it senses any obstacle, lot of complex ADA systems in this car. Okay, let's just get out of this and get into the menu now. This is like typical smartphone stuff. Like you have YouTube Music, you've got a lot of apps. You have the Google Play Store, so you can download a lot of stuff. There is the Google Play Store. You can actually open YouTube as well. That's really nice. Okay, you have to upgrade to premium to access this feature. Talking about premium, the connected car tech with the Geo SIM and all the internet functions are available for four years complimentary. After which you obviously have to pay for it. Nice way to turn off the air conditioning vent. Beautifully done. Like listen to this, okay? Very reassuring. Very reassuring. Okay. Now these are the controls for the cruise control, and cruise control is very complex. So basically, this is to increase the speed. This is to decrease the speed. These two buttons, I don't know what they do. This is to activate cruise control, and this is to increase or decrease the distance between cars, which we will test when we are doing the driving part of this video. Now these are the controls for the audio system and for the track, and this is to get into that menu, and this is for voice command. So here, when I okay, uh, it's telling me that I'm not worn a seat belt. Okay. Now when I press this button, you can see I can change the view to the maps. Again, coming from Google Maps, of course, and this is just about it. Very plain and basic uh, instrument cluster. I don't really like it as such. And then there is this information which is given about your trip data. That's about it. Earlier Volvo's, the preface lift of this car used to show a full screen of all the features available in the vehicle. But this one seems kind of basic to me at the moment. We're just going to shut this for a moment. Like I just want to get out of this menu. Now, very basic instrument cluster, I would say. It's all digital, of course, and you get all the info right there. Okay, can I come closer and show you what all is seen? If I open the door, it tells me exactly what door is open, which seat belt is not worn in the car, and yeah, that's about it. Now these are the controls for the wipers, automatic wipers. You can see wipers work really well. The spray is actually coming out from the wipers there. Yeah, it, the, the spray is actually coming out from the wipers, so they are sort of uh, what do I say inbuilt into the wipers, so there are no nozzles which are hanging outside. These are the controls for the lights. This is for front fog, this is for rear fog, and it obviously gets the automatic function as well for the fog lights. The horn. Horn is actually nice. There's a ticket holder. Oh my God, so good! I like in this vehicle, and overall quality of the cabin is really fantastic. In fact, let's get into park. We're already in park here. Now, in order to change functions, these are the settings. You can decide what you want, what you don't want. Steering assist will turn on. Lane keeping aid will turn on. Ready to drive notification will turn on. Steering wheel firm will turn it on. Like steering wheel firm, air suspension obviously is turned on as well. So that's about it. The menu which you can browse and you get behind and then you can see all the settings. Now for the audio system, now it has got studio, it's got stage sound, and it has also got yeah a concert hall as well as jazz club. Really very advanced audio system. I think this has the best audio system in any car whatsoever. Here, check that. Out. Okay, when I get into reverse, that actually goes down. The outside rear view mirror goes down just so that you can see the curves and not hit anything. So I think this is a beautiful screen, but a little small and a little too complex. I love the old one, to be very honest with you, and gets the job done. But you know, little complex menus here as well. Meanwhile, okay, a steering wheel is nice to hold. Maybe heads-up display could have been offered. Bowers and Wilkins written right there, and you get a tweeter, I think, in the center. Yeah, there is a tweeter in the center, I believe. Meanwhile, we'll do one thing. We'll turn off the car. When you turn off the car, it tells you what is the fuel range like, and yeah, that's it. Just open the door, and you are out. Everything closes. And I told you this is a fingerprint magnet, and you can see the fingerprints at the moment. I'm going to try another trick once I get out of this vehicle. The thing is, when you push it like this, it shuts like this. But this one doesn't, so you have to actually manually pull it. And this is a wireless charging pad, which is kind of small, but it gets the job done. So I'm not going to complain much about it. So here we are outside this Volvo S90, and I'm just going to use the key to lock the vehicle. And there, I lock the vehicle. And I was telling you this alarm; it keeps ringing. So I press this button, and hear this, okay? Yeah, it will keep ringing like this. This is so that you can spot the car. Okay, shut, 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 shut. You will wake the neighbors. The neighbors don't need to know about this. We are going to lock the car, and we are going to unlock all the windows. And here we go. I've kept this button pressed, the center button, which means the unlock button. And there, all the windows roll down as well. But does the sunroof open as well? Yo, no, 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 no. Sunroof does not open. That's kind of disappointing. So on that disappointment, it's time to start driving. Let's go. All right, we are all set to go, which means turning off the air conditioning, and we are also going to turn on a lot of things, which means we have to turn on the air suspension. So we get into driving and steering. Feel firm, yes. Air suspension active as well. We are going to put the maps there. It kind of looks nice and cool. There's no traction control button, which at least I can find in this car. Left foot on the brake. Okay, we get into manual mode as well. Yeah, and hazard lights off. Right foot on the accelerator. Revving the motor.
that's a very weird tachometer once you have that mode on you can't even see the numbers anyways this is powered by a 2 liter petrol engine it's known as a b5 because it is actually a mild hybrid now this 2 liter turbocharged petrol engine produces 253 ps of power and 350 newton meters of torque so the torque output is 50 newton meters less than the diesel but power output is much more because i think the diesel used to i think d4 used to produce around 190 horsepower but the magic here actually comes from the fact that it has a 48 volt Starter generator resulting in 14 PS more power and 14 Newton meters more torque, and that gives it real added punch. The result is obviously performance is really nice and slick. In fact, all the power and torque is concentrated in the mid range of this vehicle because of which the mid range is really very strong. But because of the starter generator, it kind of eliminates the turbo lag, adding that you know for 14 PS and 14 Newton meters lower down the rev range. So turbo lag is very well contained. The motor is so smooth, it's so refined. It's like makhan, literally makhan. You can't hear anything. And then in the mid range, obviously, it gets quite. vocal but top end is kind of lacking which is surprising uh, I, i thought the top end would be really nice and sweet but beyond 6000 rpm it doesn't really have any josh as such however you know in manual mode it will not hold on to a gear it will upshift and there are no paddle shifters on offer as well so kind of useless this manual mode and there are no modes there are no driving modes in this car that's so surprising that's so shocking how can you not have driving modes in a car which costs 75 lakh rupees it's like a faisal khan video without follow me on instagram yeah that, 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 that doesn't just doesn't work for me and his braking performance is really very strong and this car has a lot of safety tech which we will talk about in a bit here we are i'm just going to get into the regular drive mode and here left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator and off we go up shifts around 6500 rpm and then even can go closer to 7000 rpm but there is no top end so there is no point of pushing it engine is really very nice but do i miss a diesel of course i miss a diesel because fuel efficiency goes for a toss when compared to a diesel so this should return somewhere between 8 to 13 km per liter depending on your driving style and uh, the fuel tank capacity happens to be between 55 to 60 liters i really don't remember it at the moment but somewhere where abouts so engine is good enough maybe they could have offered us the t8 oh my god 400 horsepower but then you know the problem is as much grunt it has it completely lacks when it comes to the driving feel because it's very soft it's very uh, how do i put it it's very comfort oriented a car so it doesn't have the oom that you would expect and because of this reason alone this is not a driver's car far from it it is a car which just takes things super easy you have stop start system just to increase fuel efficiency but i can't find the button how to turn it off i don't like that system but i can't turn it off only <laughs> that, that's so funny i've been hunting but no it's not possible because the system is kind of weird it doesn't let me do any of that throttle response is actually quite nice the mid range punch is so sharp in fact at certain revs now it is too sharp a motor i mean the performance is just too sharp and obviously it kind of wheel spins even with traction control on because all the power and torque is been channeled to the front wheels yeah this is a front wheel drive car the t8 is an all wheel drive because of electric assist going to the rear wheels and the power from the engine going to the front wheels here everything is channeled to the front wheels and they're scrambling for traction all the time now the ride is actually quite nice soft this spa platform is more comfort oriented more soft as such but the problem lies with the fact that you know there's a slight uneasiness at lower speeds i don't know why uh, probably you know especially over bad roads you can feel that so that jerkiness and uncomfort rather lack of comfort comes in at lower speeds only not once you speed up because once you speed up the ride becomes beautifully flat and nice as well the ride is better at the rear that's kind of surprising not so much at the front firstly it has got low profile tires and it has got steel springs at the front and because of which ride comfort is not the best in this car uh, especially over really bad roads so it kind of affects it especially at the front at the rear it's got air suspension so it's got cutting air suspension what is cutting air suspension it's like cutting chai cutting chai in mumbai is like half cup of tea similarly this has got half suspension rear sorry half air suspension if a car had half suspension passenger you could not drive it <laughs> okay remind me of the audi q7 anyways so you know the reason because many of the air suspensions have failed on audi q7 and you see the q7 completely flat sitting down as such so the problem here is that it has got rear air suspension not at the front front uses steel springs the result is the rear is obviously much better and then ground clearance is an issue you have to be really very careful over bad bumps because it scrapes somewhere in the center and it's very hurting to the heart now it has got an 8 speed torque converter gearbox from asen and since there is no sport mode on offer for the gearbox either it's a lethargic unit it takes its own sweet time to shift gears now we're going to get into manual mode here i can shift and i'm just going to come to the lowest gear possible here second give it full throttle Yeah, it just upshifts. It's a very slow gearbox. I mean, again, comfort is the agenda here. Smoothness, refinement. This is so important in this car that somehow, for the sake of safety, Volvo seems to have forgotten that a car also needs to be fun to drive. I mean, a car costing seventy five lakhs. Okay, seventy five lakhs is the price on road Mumbai. There's just one variant. There's just one engine. So this is the inscription. It just doesn't make sense of not having any drive modes in this car. So Volvo feels that you know what, you don't need any of the drive modes. 
and because the car becomes borderline boring because of the lack of drive modes or lack of pep or lack of enthusiasm Volvo has put in so many safety systems that even if you go to sleep now they have your back now it has obviously got ADAS but a slew of ADAS systems forward collision warning automatic emergency braking blind spot assist something of that sort you name it this car has it real cross traffic alert everything is in this vehicle and it works flawlessly well adaptive cruise control okay I mean this is like it can drive itself I kid you not it can drive itself so what we're going to do is we're going to stop and we're going to launch it once again I don't even know what mode to fiddle with because there's no mode as such and left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator 2000 rpm now we go yeah baby all right so now we are going to try adaptive cruise control I press this button and it says that yeah now we are ready with adaptive cruise control I'm just going to increase the speed I'm going to put it at 90 kilometers per hour here right now I'm coming to the center lane car is driving at 90 kilometers per hour very comfortably it's going at 91 kilometers per hour that's exceeding the speed which I had actually asked it to do and there you can just cruise so it can sense that okay I'm not pressing any accelerator or brake it can sense there's a Toyota Fortuner right ahead and because of which it is automatically slowing down so the speed has come to 77 it says hold steering wheel here I held it right now now I can leave it again so it's slowing down because it sense that there's someone right ahead and then now the person is gone the car will automatically speed up and here we go again so it's going to come to the uh, to 90 kilometers per hour this is adaptive cruise control works flawlessly well it's telling me to hold the steering wheel so i just do it that's just a warning to ensure that you know people just don't leave the steering wheel and then the lane keep assist on this car is absolutely phenomenal okay it works flawlessly well here look at this it is going to keep me in the lane no matter what and i have never seen a car with such amazing lane keep assist because no matter what the road condition is this volvo has your back and now obviously it has this light which blinks on the outside rear view mirrors uh, when there's someone in a blind spot and if you give an indicator it blinks even more aggressively to tell you no baby no you are not going to make that turn now lane keep assist is flawless in this car it can actually self-drive i don't even know why i'm here i could have just told the google assistant the whole skip of this vlog I mean Google could have just spoken whatever I have to speak or whatever I'm speaking at the moment it keeps reminding me every 30 seconds that I need to hold the steering wheel because otherwise people go to sleep and stuff and here we are around a so, sort of a corner there the lane keep assist and shows that it's making the turn on the steering wheel very flawlessly I have never seen and trust me I'm telling you I've never seen a car with such an amazing lane keep assist it will always ensure you are in a lane that's how fantastic it is and then rear cross traffic alert what it does is when you're reversing in someone is that it applies brakes really aggressively it shows a warning also in the center console yeah, yeah, I have your back. I don't worry about that. Now I'm going to do just. I'm going to increase the speed. Here we have increased it, and there automatic is going to accelerate. We are going to come in the line of that Mahindra Thar. So I'm just going to give an indicator, and so that it doesn't really pull the steering wheel. And there it realizes that there's a Thar ahead. It's automatically slowing down the speed. What a beautiful system! So although this car is boring, it is definitely amazing in the way it drives and there it's really slowed down because that thar is going to have a lot of body roll so it had to slow down tremendously and you know what it can come to a standstill and then again speed up okay there it's speeding up and you can see my legs are not touching anything at all that is the level of beauty of the system and then the thar is applying brakes no problem this volvo will also do it so volvo is so amazing and it's telling me wake up buddy enough of having fun in the car so i'm just going to take control right away what a beautiful system fantastic volvo safety focus is just amazing in fact if you if there's a car on the side and you try to you know turn it will immediately alert you now the problem is lane keep assist is very aggressive so it really pulls the steering and at times when you don't give an indicator and you make a lane change now you're actually fighting with the steering wheel i'm like no 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 i want to do it i want to do it car like no 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 you're not going to do it baby anyways so the steering wheel is actually very light it's kind of lifeless it weighs up decently well at speed and it doesn't feel at all nervous but you know what it doesn't really point and shoot so it's very lazy a car very smooth easy going car doesn't believe in point and shoot at all it doesn't point it doesn't shoot it just takes its own time rolling 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 yeah because it is considerable body roll on offer as well because of the soft suspension and the overall dynamic steering everything is just aimed towards comfort and it really is flawless in terms of comfort but volvo is making one of the most boring cars in the luxury car segment because this s90 is not fun at all to drive it has a good engine i would say but just not fun enough and then when you're buying a car worth 75 lakhs you just don't want to buy it for the chauffeur you also want to like press some buttons make some driving mode changes and then go flat out no 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 okay zero to 100 kilometers per hour comes under eight seconds which makes it decently quick actually the engine is really very nice very smooth very fast and all those things however top speed well it's just 180 kilometers per hour because volvo has restricted the top speed of this car so i would say in the quest of safety volvo has lost the driving dynamics and the fun aspect of the car 
but then most people wouldn't complain about it okay you can, you can hear the suspension that is a bit of a problem that the suspension feels uneasy and uncomfortable over bad bumps and that noise is transmitted inside the cabin so yeah that's something you have to really watch out for you see around the corners it is rolling quite a bit so that body roll could have been contained a lot better now volvo has restricted the top speed to 180 kilometers per hour this engine can obviously take it to 220 kilometers per hour but volvo is like no 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 how can we let you have fun be safe and i i believe safety is a great aspect to have but mercedes audi bmw are also making safe cars which are blisteringly quick as well so as i see it this s90 is actually a value for money pick but the lack of drive modes comes as a not as a surprise to me it comes more of a shock to me yeah like how could you not give this car drive mode i mean uh, like i put a story saying that help me fast be more with finding stuff they're like you just swipe left and all that's your old sensor system where all i mean all the functions were right there on the left side this google system is overall better but kind of boring i mean android is borderline boredom but then yeah that's how it is i have no other comments to make at the moment safety wise definitely a great car but then safety is something which is intangible right you're not going to measure it that drive mode is tangible and i want that drive mode and i don't know how i'm going to get that drive mode and on that disappointment it's time to stop and launch it again because no matter how many times i launch my heartbeat just does not go up it's all about calm this car can put you to sleep and that's the reason why it has so many safety systems because when you sleep this car will have your back and then it's going to keep buzzing and telling you oh hold the steering wheel left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor and off we go aha that's the spirit wheel spin on up shift yeah baby that's what we're talking about anyways forward collision warning is first a warning would come and if you don't apply brakes then it will apply brakes and then it applies brakes with a lot of enthusiasm sometimes scaring you silly as well now the reason why we would want to buy a volvo is because it is relatively cheaper to maintain volvo offers a 3 years maintenance package or service package which costs rupees 75000 only yeah that is kind of affordable because 3 years you don't have to worry about service cost at all now here we are let's see how forward collision warning actually works or should we there we are approaching and then automatically Automatically, it was able to identify if there's someone ahead. But obviously, the radars are so complex now. It knows when I'm trying to, you know, replicate a situation. It is not going to respond in that regard. There, 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 there. It rings and then, you know, it's blinking, 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 and then it obviously turns off. Now, by the way, for adaptive cruise control, here we are into adaptive cruise control. I'm just going to increase the speed. Now, you notice there is this car thingy ahead. I can actually increase the distance. So, I want to maintain a bigger distance. See, it's applying brakes very aggressively. See, I have not done anything. Apply it. My legs. Oh, I'm not applying anything. I just want to maintain a lesser distance there. I can actually use these buttons to change that, and then obviously it's going to be closer to the car ahead. So, the safety systems work fantastically well. People who are doing ADAS need to learn it from Volvo. Volvo does another level of. Uh, ada systems all together so fantastic obviously it needs a minimum speed of 15 km per hour for you to activate the system and then once it's activated it just works so beautifully well and uh, obviously the way the blind spot monitor either the blind spot bii as they say i don't know the full form blind information blind spot information system something of that sort what a system what a beauty everything is so well done in this car i mean i have no reason to complain as far as the safety goes or even the ride and overall comfort of this vehicle goes but here we're going to come to the left lane so that the car speeds up on its own and then when it detects things now it's able to do it very smoothly like it's not going to jerkily apply brakes it has detected there did you even notice that it started decreasing the speed it does it so flawlessly well this volvo car is mind blowing absolutely mind blowing in terms of the ada systems here, turn the steering wheel and there picks up pace no problem at all steering kind of feels heavyish with the the lane keep assist fighting you all the time so as i see it i love this car just for the safety but is a car i mean rather is it a car i'm going to buy absolutely not it just doesn't get my pulse racing i'm so calm i'm so at peace and then i wonder that i'm in a car which costs so much money but it doesn't excite me enough and that's the reason why volvo's whole stand of making cars safe is actually good but safety should not come at the cost of fun and that's the problem here and on that disappointment is time to end. thank you so, so much for watching guys if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's a like button but we had to do a audio test so i'm going to do that right away Thank <laughs> you.